quick warning for those of you who are looking to send me stuff. If you send me something and I agree, don't expect me to give a fake review. I'm gonna tell people how I really feel about it, okay? So that being said, Yes Welder, all sorts of other companies try to send me their garbage and I've taken it and I haven't given the review because quite frankly, a lot of the stuff they've sent me is shit. But today, I got one, I'm gonna actually make a video review. It's a weird one. This company reached out to me, I think it's they're called like Bolove or whatever, I'll put it up on the screen. That's so bad sign. I went to lift this thing, the handle ripped right off the damn case, but whatever. Maybe that's not a reflection of the product itself. So here it is. Yes, believe it or not, that is a welder. Um, it is DCEN only. As you can see the little negative sign up here, which is the electrode holder. Subscribe! And down here is the positive sign. And uh, this here just screws in like that. The little electrode holder, I have messed with this a little bit. I haven't really welded with it too much. Just screws in like that. And then you just screw down whatever electrode you're gonna put into it. All right, let's see if this bad boy turns on. Okay, and as you can see, there's a digital screen. So the on off button is also the adjustment. You can see I'm turning it up amperage wise. It'll go all the way up to 140 amps. Pretty impressive for this little tiny unit all the way down to 15 amps. I don't know how accurate that is or even if it works. We're gonna go ahead and give it a shot right now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this bad boy up to, let's say 90 amps. And I'm gonna run 6013 through it because that's a DCEN electrode. Definitely not gonna be running no 7018. So what I've got here is some quarter inch mild steel plate. I'm just gonna use this to test this thing out on. Not prepping it, not doing anything crazy. There's no reason to. How you uh, put your stinger in this thing, basically all you do is just stick it in there. Go ahead and screw it down. Nothing too scientific or crazy about it. This is some old 6013. It's not brand new. It's not nice stuff. So that could be a play in effect if we do have any issues. But let's give this thing a shot. slag is just getting ready to pop off there so i mean it seems like it's a decent well it does look a little cold but let's get it up close all right let's check this weld out and see how it came out really not awful a little slag inclusion that's probably my fault though not bad not great let's try turning the amperage up and see what that does let's go up to 100. I definitely made a few mistakes that time. Yeah, not great. Let me change the rod out. Let me 
those in our rod bucket. And now we're gonna go ahead and try to weld these two pieces of metal together. I left this about a 16th gap. It's not really consistent because this piece of metal is not cut straight. But we're just gonna go and weld that out and see what kind of results we get. I'm gonna crank the amperage up to 110. Pack it first. And it's good enough to join yourself two pieces of plate together. Not bad. It's actually not awful. It's not great. It's also not awful. It's not bad at all. For our next test, I'm going to attempt to do an uphill pass. I don't do any uphill 60-13, so this will be interesting. Down here is not too awful. This is the 110 amps. Here is where I restruck at 100 amps. And as you can see, not very good. This wasn't very good either. Definitely not passable. This, uh, I don't know. I mean, I could live with this. But up here, wow, that's horrible. But hey, this is what it is. Here we have some 8th inch 7014 rods. I've actually never used this before. It's just been sitting in there. And as you can see, these things are fucking shot. Let's see. Yeah, it's never a good sign when the flux will bend like that with the rod. Yeah, these things are shot for sure. So that's okay. We're just messing around today, so we can use some shot out rods for this. It looks like eighth inch rod is the largest rod it will accept. So I'm gonna assume that this thing is about 20 amps off of where it should really be. Because it's saying 100, and that was more like what 80 amps runs like on anything else I've ever welded with. So I'm gonna kick this bad boy up to 130, assuming that's about 110. 7014. Let's see how this goes. I've never welded with 7014 before. God knows why I bought that. Like the 140 a lot better. Oh. Oh, error. Saying fault. So it appears we have an error. Let's try turning it off. Okay, shut itself down. Oh wait, maybe it's restarting. So you're restarting right back up. Okay, let's try welding with her again. All right, now this thing's retacked to the table. Let's go ahead and try to run an uphill. I'm gonna run one right here, right next to the other one. And let's see how she does going uphill. Going up. Oh. Right. 
error. The little guy don't like 140. So let's reset it. And I'm gonna kick it down to 130. Just see if maybe it's just too much for the little guy. Or maybe I don't have enough power at the outlet. I mean, 140 amps is, is quite a bit for, you know, 110. Let's get the slag off suit we got. Probably a, little, probably a little too hot or something. Oh, it's like shit. Not good. Not good at all. But hey, look at these rods. They don't look too good, huh? They look like they've been sitting for a long time, and they have. Well guys, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pretty impressed with the little guy. You can't run 7018 with it, you can't run 6010 with it, which are two of the rods that I run. Basically, that's all I run. I don't run 6013 or 7014. So it's a little useless to me. But to a homeowner and they want something compact that doesn't weigh a million pounds, they can whip it out to weld like a trailer leg on or fix some farm equipment, this thing's pretty fucking cool. I mean, look at it, it don't weigh shit. I mean, it's a little cumbersome when you're trying to weld with it. So it does take some getting used to, I'm sure. I'm sure if you gave me some time with it, I could get pretty decent with her. But hey, it was free to me, so I can't complain, right? As far as professional wise, this is not made for professionals, but it is pretty impressive that it'll go from 15 to 140 amps. I've never seen anything like it. In fact, I didn't even know anything like this existed until they sent it to me. Well guys, it's pretty cool. If you want to buy yourself one, there's a link down in the description below. Uh, don't buy this if you're planning on doing some serious welding, okay? Buy this if you want to fuck around, you want a little a conversation piece with your welder friends. That's really what it's good for. The engine drive still is not replaced. Don't think this is going to replace your engine drive. It is not. Maybe if they come out with the DCEP version, make it a little lighter, then yeah, I, I yeah, then fuck. I'll, I'll take both of the machines off my trucks and sell them because... You know, everybody's got 110 and this goes up to 140 amps. And let's be real. How many times do you guys go above 140 amps? I know I rarely go above 140 amps, even when I'm welding real thick shit, because it's always beveled. All right, guys, I'm Melt Metal Anthony. If you liked the video, like it. If you didn't, go fuck yourself.